this is a video on chemical kinetics. This particular video goes along with your textbook section 13.1 and this is chapter 13. Chapter 13 is on chemical kinetics. Chemical kinetics. Well, according to this slide, thermodynamics is about does a reaction take place? And we won't be really talking about that until later on in a different chapter. Right now, the thermodynamics that you're aware of talks about the energy change that occurs during a chemical reaction. But in later on in the course, when we do another chapter on thermodynamics, it will be about does a reaction take place? Kinetics is about how fast does the reaction proceed? How fast does it take place? Does it take place slow? Does it take place fast? Some reactions are fast, like photosynthesis, and it needs to be fast because of the fact that if it's not fast, the plant would die. Other reactions are slow, like the curing of concrete. I'm sure you're familiar with concrete. Concrete does not dry. It cures, and it's a chemical reaction. And there are many other reactions that are in between. Reaction rate deals with how fast the reaction proceeds. Reaction rate is the change in the concentration of a reactant or product with time. And it's measured in molarity per second. So how's the concentration in molarity change per time? Or molarity per second. Usually in seconds. Not always in seconds. Sometimes it can be measured in minutes. Sometimes it can be measured in hours. And we have to be careful of that. We must make sure that we look at the units when we look at the rate. So for a reaction of A going to be a very simple reaction. The rate of the reaction in terms of A is minus the change in the concentration of A over the change in time. And the rate in terms of B is the change in the concentration of B over the change in time. As you can see above, delta A is the change in the concentration of A over the time period delta T. So the bracket around A stands for concentration, specifically molar concentration. So, and of course, delta stands for change. So it's the change in the molar concentration of A over a period of time. And of course, delta B stands for the change in the concentration of B over a period of time. Because A decreases with time, we make delta A negative. In other words, the concentration of A is decreasing. If we take the value of the concentration of A initially and look at the concentration of A at the end, the value when we subtract final minus initial, since final will be smaller than initial, should come out to be a negative value. For the same reaction, A goes to B. Let's look at a nice diagram or model of the reaction taking place in terms of A and B and its change in concentration. Initially we have nothing but A. As time goes by we can see time goes by we see that the red ones are appearing and remember if you look above here the red ones are B and the black ones are A. And As time goes by more and more B appears and less and less of A is left and more and more B and then less and less of A and so on and so forth and we can continue over time and we can see the concentration of B increases and the concentration of A decreases and we've gotten to a certain length of time and the arrow measuring the clock measuring time seems to be back where it was before so it could be a minute or it could be an hour or it could be a second who knows because the time is not defined but we see that the concentration of B has decreased the con I'm sorry, the concentration of B has increased and the concentration of A has decreased. And of course, we still see that we have some A left. So this reaction has not gone fully to completion. And here's a graph of the number of molecules on the y-axis versus time in seconds on the x-axis. And we can see that the concentration of A starts out at 40 molecules, whatever, and as time goes by it decreases down to about 10 molecules left after apparently it's 60 seconds so apparently that's a minute 
and we can see that the initial concentration of B was zero and as time goes by we can see that we have now in 60 seconds gone up to about mm, about 30 about 30 particles something like that and if we take a look at these it appears that the rates are pretty much the same because the concentration of A keeps changing and the concentration of B keeps changing and it appears that the appearance of B looks like it's appearing at about the same rate that A is disappearing which would seem to make sense since for every one A that disappears one B appears and the rate for A is equal to minus the change in concentration of A over time and the rate in terms of B is the concentration of change in the concentration of B over time this is a specific reaction it's definitely very specific as opposed to what we just looked at which was very general in this particular reaction uh, we have bromine aqueous bromine and aqueous formic acid reacting to form two bromine ions two hydrogen ions and carbon dioxide we can see when we start on the left hand side we can see that the reaction is a very dark color and that comes from the bromine so the bromine is very dark and as time goes by we can see that the con color keeps getting lighter and lighter and lighter and that's because since the bromine is a very dark liquid the bromine dissolved in water is, is that dark brownish or orangish color as time goes by the amount of bromine left decreases as the reaction proceeds and therefore we go from a colorful solution to a less colorful solution to a solution that is free of color and this is basically how we can keep an eye on this reaction based upon the change in the color we would use a spectronic 20 or, or some type of uh, device which is similar to a spectronic 20 which you guys used in that cobalt chloride lab and we would measure concentration of the bromine based upon color now in order to simplify this we're going to make sure that the formic acid the HCOOH concentration is extremely high and so that the concentration of the formic acid does not change effectively over time because it's really really large and so the only thing that we're going to study is the change in the concentration of the bromine and again based upon light passing through it would be determined that the wavelength the best wavelength to be used for this determination of the concentration of bromine turn, turns out to be about 400 nanometers and of course you know you use the spec 20 before turns out that 393 or almost 400 nanometers is the best wavelength and light passes through to the detector and based upon wavelength and absorbance and we can figure out the concentration like we did in the cobalt chloride lab the change in the bromine concentration is directly related to the change in the absorption so based upon absorption over a period of time the concentration of the bromine has been measured at various times 0 seconds, 50 seconds, 100 seconds, 150 seconds, and so on. And then a plot of the concentration of the bromine versus time is made. The average rate for this reaction in terms of bromine is minus the change in the concentration of bromine over time. So we can pick two points on this line, any two points on this line that we choose, and we can take the concentration of the bromine final subtract the concentration of the bromine initial and put it over t initial or t final minus t initial and we'll get the average rate so we would pick two points so maybe we say we pick this point right here and we pick this point right here um, since time is traveling we're gonna call this the final concentration and this the initial concentration and we're gonna plug in the final concentration here and we see that it's actually smaller than what the initial concentration which we're gonna plug in right here and then we're gonna use the time of 300 seconds as final and it's about 100 seconds as initial and we're gonna take the final concentration which was smaller than the initial concentration and subtract and of course that's gonna make this come out negative 
So we would take the two concentrations, we would subtract, we would take the two times, we would subtract, and we would get the average rate for this particular reaction. We can also do what's known as the instantaneous rate. The instantaneous rate is equal to the rate for a specific instant in time. The way we do that, my friends, is we pick a particular time, let's say 100 seconds, we would draw a line tangent to that point, and then we would just find the slope of that line, and the slope of that line is going to give us the rate. So, if we look at the point, we take a tangent to the point, we take the slope of that line, and the slope of that tangent line gives us the instantaneous rate. If this was a calculus-based course, would we be doing some calculus to find that value? But since it's not calculus-based, we just do this. And again, the rate at 200 seconds and the rate at 300 seconds. And we can see that the rate changes over time. Obviously, it's decreasing because the amount of BR2 is also decreasing over time. So, here's some interesting information. We have the times, we have the concentrations, same data as you saw in the previous slide. But along with that, we have the rates. So the rates are calculated based upon the absorbance of the particular, at the particular time for the bromine. And a plot of rate versus concentration is made. We see that the plot of rate versus concentration for this particular reaction gives us a nice straight line. So, in other words, if we take the rate and divide it by the concentration of the bromine, we get a number which is about the same. It turns out that the rate divided by the concentration of the bromine is a constant. The rate is directly related to the bromine concentration. The rate, therefore, must be equal to the bromine concentration times the constant K, which is the slope of the line for this particular set of data, the rate versus the concentration. K is the rate divided by the concentration of bromine and is known as the rate law constant or the rate constant. Since the rate is directly related to the concentration of bromine and not equal to the concentration of bromine, the constant K is necessary to equate the concentration and the rate. So therefore we can see in terms of a mathematical equation how the concentration of bromine affects the rate. We can see that it's a direct relationship and that the rate can be calculated if we know the value of K. The rate can be calculated at any concentration for bromine if we know K or we can calculate the concentration of bromine if we know the rate and the value of K. Since K in this case is about equal to 3.50 times to the negative third and the units are seconds to the negative one because rate is in molarity per second and the concentration of bromine is in molarity therefore the two molarities are going to cancel and you'll get seconds to the minus one or reciprocal seconds. Here's another particular reaction which we're going to really spend a lot of time talking about. This is the reaction of the decomposition of hydrogen peroxide. It's a catalyzed reaction, in other words, something is added to it in order to make it go faster. Uh, basically, well, how we follow this reaction in terms of the rate is we measure the change in the pressure over time. We know that PV is equal to nRT and that P divided by N times V, I'm sorry, Let's try that again. That P is equal to N divided by V times RT. Well, N over V is the concentration in moles per liter of the oxygen gas that's being produced. So the pressure is equal to N over V times R times T, which is equal to the concentration of O2 times R times T. The concentration of O2, therefore, is equal to 1 over R times T times P. Therefore, the rate, since it's equal to the change in the concentration of O2 over time, is equal to 1 over R times T times the change in the pressure over time. 
where 1 over RT is a constant since this is done under constant temperature conditions the rate becomes equal to the change in the concentration I'm sorry the change in the pressure over the change in time times the constant 1 over RT and here is a graph of the pressure versus time and that should be similar to the rate over time reaction rates in stoichiometry let's say we have a reaction a very simple reaction in which two A molecules react to form B molecules two molecules of A disappear for each molecule of B that is formed so therefore the rate of B should be half the rate of A the rate is equal to minus one-half the change in concentration of A over time and the rate is equal to the change in concentration of B over time therefore they should equate to each other and show that the rate of formation of B is half the rate of disappearance of A for any reaction in which A with a coefficient of A plus B with a coefficient of B reacts with C with a coefficient of C plus D with a coefficient of D the following must be true so we can show the stoichiometric relationship between the change in the concentration of A, B, C, and D because as we saw in the example above since two molecules of A disappear for each molecule of B that is formed the rate of appearance of B has to be half the rate of disappearance of A. So remember, this represents the rate right here, and this represents the rate, and this rate should be half of this rate. So these two are equal to each other. Here, A, B, C, and D represent the coefficients in front and this represents the rate of each of those things as they appear like in the case of C and D or disappear like in the case of A and B write the rate expression for the following reaction the rate for the disappearance of CH4 is the change in the concentration of CH4 over time since the coefficient for the oxygen is 2 that's equal to minus half the rate of the disappearance of O2. So the rate of disappearance of CH4 is half the rate of disappearance of O2 because it's a one to two relationship. The rate of appearance the CO, of the CO2 is equal to the rate of disappearance of CH4 and because the coefficient out in front of the water is one half the rate of appearance of H2O is half the rate of the CO2 the same as the rate of the disappearance of O2 and half the rate of CH4. So the CH4 is half the rate of the appearance of H2O. The rate law expresses the relationship of the rate of the reaction and the rate constant and concentration of the reactions raised to some powers. And we're going to end right here. And I believe that's the end of section one. And I'm not really happy with it.